Welcome to the channel, and today I'm going to show you how to change the oil and filter on a Suzuki GSX-R600. It's a 2006 K7. Um, you're going to want some basic mechanical knowledge for this one, it's nothing too difficult. Uh, general tools, rags, gloves, all that stuff to keep yourself clean. Um, a paddock stand to keep it nice and level. And as you're going to be working on the left hand side, you're going to want it quite upright as well. Um, I'm going to be putting in fully synthetic Motel oil, it takes 2.2 litres, and a Suzuki Genuine oil filter. I'll show you a few of the bits on the bike. So, you've got your filler cap there for when you fill it up, and your sight and window for your level just down there. And if you come around to the other side, you've got your sump bung just under there, you can see there, and your oil filter is just under this left hand fairing. Up in there, it's quite difficult to see, but you see it better when the fairing's off. Some people struggle around trying to do it with the fairing on, but I'm going to be taking this left hand fairing off today. Right, so let's crank on. Right, so for this next section, I'm just going to show you how to remove the fairing. So you've got Allen keys along here, I think they're four mil. So you obviously just want to strip all of these out, and then you come down here and you've got a popper system just under there. Uh, you've got another Allen key just here and if you've got crash bungs on which I have R and G's it's got a 17 mil rather large bolt running through there it's just a little cap on there which I've already took off um, so you just pop that over a screwdriver um, and then I think that's it yeah I mean, once you've taken that out there's a popper in here but that's everything then the fairing should lift away from the bike Right, so this is what it looks like once you've stripped off your fairing. It only takes about five minutes to take the fairing off. You've got a few other bits you need to be pushing, like in here. It's just a little bit fiddly, but with a bit of manhandling, it all comes off pretty easy. What you want to do next is drain your oil. So, you want to be loosening this off. Now, some people don't do this, but what this does is allows air to flow through the engine when you remove the sump bung. So make sure you put that somewhere safe, like in the middle of the floor, or more so, in your tin of parts. So yeah, that allows air to flow through when you undo your sunk bung. So that's what we're going to do next. Right, so what we're going to do next, we're going to crack off our sump bung. Hopefully she's not too tight. Shouldn't be, because they, if you've got a decent, no that's not tight. If you've got a decent crush washer on there, people shouldn't have done it up too tight in the past. Likewise, when you're doing up, you shouldn't do it up too tight either. Let's see how dark this oil is. It's not too bad. A few little scraps of metal but not a lot at all. So that's good. Get myself a rag. Well, we're going to leave this to drain out and then we're going to undo our oil filter. You don't, when this is drained out, you don't want to be putting your sump bung back in because you want to replace your washer and you want to do your oil filter first, which then will allow it to drip for a little bit. Right, so once your oil's draining out nicely, which you can see us, there's not much left in there now, it's just drain out, small trickle. Um, so yeah, you want to be replacing that little crush washer on there. You can see on there, it's only about 70 pence in the UK from uh, Suzuki themselves. So it's not like it's a big hardship that one. So I would recommend replacing that as well. All right, so now we're going to remove the oil filter. You can see her up there, just sitting above your exhaust. What you want to do is you want to cover your exhaust up because you're going to get oil running down here on your exhaust and it's going to smoke and stink. So you can use a plastic bag or whatever you like. I'm going to be interesting and this, oh by the way, this shouldn't be too tight. You can do it with your hand. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use a piece of metal. Oh, well, that's not really worked because it's dripping on the exhaust anyway. But as long as you clean it off pretty well after, it's not going to be the end of the world. I've caught a little bit of it there, but not a huge amount, I must admit. So yeah, spin your filler off. Get 
and bring them out there without making too much of a mess hopefully just check your seal came off with it because if you put your new one on with a seal already on there as soon as the pressure builds up that'll pop straight off so just check your seal here has come off with the exhaust yeah, with the filter not the exhaust all right so let that dribble out for a bit and i'll get the new filter ready right so once your filter's off and you got your new filter here this is a genuine suzuki oil filter what you want to do is you just want to have a visual size up um, check you got the right filter there which you should have because i don't think there's actually any variance um so it looks right measures up right then what you want to do just want to get a smear of oil and just run it around your your seal there on your filter and what that does stops the filter from binding onto the metal um, and then you get a kink in your seal and before you know it you got a leak so what we're going to do now is we're going to install the new filter right so we're installing our new filter now and what you want to do is you just want to check this surface here make sure it's nice and clean you don't want any muck on the seal on your new filter uh, and then we're going to sort of wind our filter on just engage you on the thread there before you start giving it any real effort right, so you see it's just spinning on there freely so you know you're not cross threading it then spin it on and you don't want to go too tight with this just sort of nicely nip tap because we don't want leaks at the same time and tight is plenty Just like that should be tight enough. And then after you've got your filter on, you just want to go over this exhaust. The idea is get some some cleaning spirits on there and wipe some of that oil off. You want to get it nice and clean, otherwise it's gonna smoke when you start the bike up. You need to get as much of that off as you can. That's if you uh, spilt it like I did. As if you got did it the way I said, you shouldn't have too much oil on there. <laughs> right, that's pretty, pretty clean there. Oil on there now. Right, so now we're going to be putting our sump bung back in, our new washer. So once again, get it hand tight first of all, because you don't want to be cross threading it. So wind it in nice with your hands, it should be nice and free. So she stops. Just clean my hand. Right, and then we do that sump bung up. That back out of the way. You don't want to be going too tight with this either. It's just literally a quarter turn. Nipped out so it crushes that washer. And that's plenty tight enough. Give it all a clean up under there. All of our excess oil off that dripped off that filter around the bottom of the engine there. And that's your new sump bung in place. Right, so now we've got our new filter on, our sump bung back in. At the moment we're still on the paddock stand. Um, we're going to fill it up with oil. What we're going to be using is the Motel 7100 1040. Uh, four stroke motor oil. This is their more upper upper range stuff, it's reasonably expensive. Um, and this bike takes 2200 milliliters. Um, so that's what we're going to put in. We're going to put these are in one liter each, so you've got 2000 there, and then we're just going to take out the couple of hundred milliliters out of one of these bottles. Right. I'll just hand my camera in for my assistant. <laughs> Use a funnel for this, otherwise it's going to be rather messy. Right, oil's in. Well, we've put 2,200 milliliters in, 2.2 liters. Um, 
And what we're going to do is we're going to drop her off the stand, start her up to let the oil run around the system, and then if there's any adjustments to be made, some more to be put in, we're, we're, we're going to be able to see in the sight glass. So you want to be putting your cap back in first before you start the engine anyway. So otherwise your oil's going to be jumping out all over the place. Drop off the stand now. Right, so now we took the, the bike off its paddock stand, and we're just going to start her up to let the oil run around the system. Be checking for leaks. This is running. So yeah, we just check for leaks as well. Whether my torch is gone. You're all good there. Just check your filter as well. All good there. And then we're going to just stand the bike up and have a look at our sight glass. Alright, so we made some adjustments. Um, after further in reading up, what we realised is that the 2200 millilitres on here is just for your oil change. With your filter on there, it's going to take roughly about 2,800 millilitres, 2.8 litres, to fill your filter up as well. So once you've done that, put your cap on and I'll show you where your oil level should be with your bike upright. So that's off its side stand, being held upright for you, or you can do it yourself. But that's about as much as you want in there. My oil's red because, because it is. I have no idea why. But yeah, about halfway up your sight window, just over. Okay, so you can see it there. That's with the bike run, so the oil's going to run around the filter. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to put it back on a on a paddock stand in a minute, and we're just going to re replace and refit all our fairings here. So that's what it looks like with all your fairing replaced. She's back on a size stand now off the paddock stand. All you want to do now: double check all your nuts and bolts. Double check there's no leaks. Uh, double check your oil level. And that's it for me. She's all done. That's your oil and filter change on a GSX-R600. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Join us next time where I'm going to show you how to change the spark plugs on this bike.